Hello and welcome to episode 8 of Learn English with Photos. In the first part of this lesson, I'm going to be talking about Dartmoor National Park, which is one of my favourite areas of England. I'll then go over some of the vocabulary we've seen, and finally I'll ask you some questions about related topics. I was born and grew up in Plymouth in the county of Devon in the southwest of England. As you can see from this map, Plymouth is just a few miles from Dartmoor, so I've got to know the place quite well over the years. Let's begin with a general description. Dartmoor, which takes its name from the River Dart, is an area of moorland which covers 954 square kilometres, that's 368 square miles. A moor is an area of open and usually high land with poor soil that is covered mainly with grass, heather, gorse and bracken. Locals tend to refer to it just as the moors. Dartmoor is known for its tors, hills topped with outcrops of granite. More than 160 of the hills of Dartmoor have the word Tor in their name. The highest point is High Wilhays, which is 621 metres, or 2,037 feet, above sea level. The Tors are the focus of an annual event known as the Ten Tors Challenge, when around 2,400 young people, aged between 14 and 19, walk for distances of up to 88 kilometres, or 55 miles, between ten Tors on many differing routes. Much more rain falls on Dartmoor than in the surrounding lowlands. As much of the national park is covered in thick layers of peat, the rain is usually absorbed quickly and distributed slowly, so the moor is rarely dry. In areas where water accumulates, dangerous bogs or mires can result. Some of the bogs on Dartmoor have achieved notoriety, the most notable being Foxtor mires, supposedly the inspiration for Great Grimpen Mire in Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes novel The Hound of the Baskervilles. Although parts of Dartmoor have been used as military firing ranges for over 200 years, the public enjoy extensive access rights and it's a popular tourist destination. So, what is there to see and do on Dartmoor? Well, since Dartmoor is an area of outstanding natural beauty, you could just go for a drive to admire the scenery. But there are plenty of more energetic options. The oldest leisure pursuit on the moor is hill walking. However, it's important to have the right equipment with you, especially if you're intending to go off the beaten track, as the weather can change very suddenly. Many people have lost their lives on the moors because they were badly equipped. So, if you do go hiking on Dartmoor, be sure to take some waterproof clothing and a compass. The activity known as letterboxing originated on Dartmoor in the 19th century and has become increasingly popular in recent decades. Watertight containers or letterboxes are hidden throughout the moor, each containing a visitor's book and a rubber stamp. Visitors take an impression of the letterbox's rubber stamp as proof of finding the box and record their visit by stamping their own personal stamp in the letterbox's logbook. A recent related development is geocaching. Geocache clues make use of GPS coordinates, where letterboxing clues tend to consist of grid references and compass bearings. Whitewater kayaking and canoeing are popular on the rivers due to the high rainfall. Other activities include rock climbing on the granite tours, horse riding and cycling, though you'll need a mountain bike if you're going off-road. And if you want something a bit more relaxing, you could try angling for trout and salmon, although you'll probably need a permit as much of the river fishing on Dartmoor is privately owned. The Dartmoor landscape is scattered with the marks left by the many generations who have lived and worked there over the centuries, such as the remains of the once mighty Dartmoor tin mining industry and farmhouses long since abandoned. Dartmoor also contains the largest concentration of Bronze Age remains in the United Kingdom. The climate at the time was warmer than today, and much of today's moorland was covered with trees. The prehistoric settlers began clearing the forest and established the first farming communities. Numerous prehistoric menias, more usually referred to locally as standing stones or long stones, stone circles, cairns and stone rows are to be found on the moor. Some way into the moor stands the town of Princetown, the site of the notorious Dartmoor prison, which was originally built both by and for prisoners of war from the Napoleonic Wars. The prison has a reputation for being escape-proof, due to both the buildings themselves and its physical location. The Dartmoor Prison Museum contains an interesting collection of artefacts and provides a unique insight into prison life, both past and present. While Princetown is not particularly attractive, the prison doesn't help, 
There are plenty of other more picturesque small towns and villages dotted all over Dartmoor. One of my favourite spots is Brentor, where the tiny church is perched on top of the rocky outcrop of the same name. And of course there's no shortage of pubs, where you can have a pint of beer while you recover from all your exertions. Just make sure you don't drink and drive. No description of Dartmoor would be complete without mention of the famous Dartmoor ponies. Because of the extreme weather conditions experienced on the moors, the Dartmoor is a particularly hardy breed with excellent stamina. Over the centuries, it has been used as a working animal by local tin miners and quarry workers. When the mines closed, some ponies were kept for farming, but most of the ponies were turned out onto the moor. A few decades ago, the pony population was estimated at around 30,000, but this figure has steadily dwindled to less than 2,000. This is due to a number of factors, such as a reduction in the demand for ponies, and the fact that farmers grazing ponies on the uplands receive no subsidies. It's illegal to feed the ponies since it encourages them to stay near the road where they might be killed or seriously injured. Moreover, since the ponies are untamed, they can be unpredictable and may kick and bite if approached. Despite all this, the ponies are very popular with visitors and it's a very common sight to see ponies being fed snacks through an open car window. Ponies are not the only hazard for the Dartmoor motorist. It's quite common to find sheep lying in the middle of the road, hence the warning, take more care. You might also see a tiger, but only if you visit the Dartmoor Wildlife Park, which was the inspiration for the Hollywood movie, We Bought a Zoo. Now that we've finished exploring Dartmoor, let's go over some of the vocabulary we've seen. I'll say each word twice, and you can repeat it after me if you like. I'll also make a few comments as we go along. The first word is angling. Angling. Angling is a method of fishing using a hook. The hook is usually attached to a fishing line and the line is often attached to a fishing rod. Bracken. Bracken. Bracken is a large plant that grows thickly in open areas of countryside, especially on hills and in woods. Canoe. Canoe. A canoe is a light narrow boat which is sharp at both ends and which is usually propelled by paddling using uh, paddles. Compass. Compass. A compass is an instrument that you use for finding directions. The four points of the compass are north, south, east and west. Cycling. Cycling. Cycling is the activity of riding a bicycle or bike. For example, cycling is my favourite activity. I always go cycling at the weekend. Gorse. Gorse. Gorse is a dark green bush with yellow flowers and sharp prickles. Granite. Granite. Granite is a very hard igneous rock which is often used as a building material. Greys. Greys. When animals such as cows or sheep graze, they eat grass or other plants. Heather. Heather. Heather is a low spreading plant with small purple, pink or white flowers. Hiking. Hiking. Hiking is the activity of going for long walks in the country, especially for enjoyment. Last summer we went hiking in the Pyrenees. Horse riding. Horse riding. Horse riding is the activity of riding a horse, especially for enjoyment or as a form of exercise. I'd love to go horse riding more often, but it's very expensive. Moor. Moor. A moor is an area of open land, usually with peaty soil, covered with heather, bracken and moss. Mountain bike. Mountain bike. A mountain bike is a type of bicycle that is suitable for riding over rough ground. Note that despite the name, mountain bikes are not only used in mountains. Peat. Peat. Peat is decaying plant material which is often found under the ground in cool, wet regions. Pony. Pony. A pony is a type of small horse. Quarry. Quarry. A quarry is an area dug out from a piece of land or a mountain 
in order to get stone or mineral. Salmon. Salmon. Salmon is a large silver coloured fish with pink flesh. Note that the L in salmon is not pronounced. Scenery. Scenery. The scenery in a country area is everything that you can see around you. Uh, note that scenery is an uncountable noun, so you cannot talk about uh, a scenery, for example. Sheep. Sheep. A sheep is a farm animal which is kept for its wool or its meat. Note that the plural of sheep is sheep. So we talk about uh, one sheep, two sheep. Trout. Trout. A trout is a fairly large fish that lives in rivers and streams and is eaten as food. Right, in this last part of the uh, lesson, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. I suggest that you stop the recording uh, to give you time to answer. Question 1. Which areas of Britain have you visited or would you like to visit? Question 2. Can you describe one of the national parks in your country? Question 3. How would you spend a day on Dartmoor? Question 4. The lesson mentions leisure activities such as cycling, hiking and canoeing. What other outdoor leisure activities can you think of? Question 5. What are your favourite leisure activities? Question 6. What type of scenery do you prefer? Question 7. Do you prefer to go on holiday in the country or by the sea? Why? And question 8. What is the most beautiful natural place you've ever visited? Can you describe it? OK, that's the end of this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed learning something about Dartmoor and I look forward to working with you again on another edition of Learn English with Photos.